in this second reading, we heard St. Paul makes quite a bold proclamation. He's basically saying this message of new life in Jesus Christ is so important that every single nation needs to know about it. He's saying that this, this revelation of God has now become so clear that it must be broadcast to pagans everywhere and bring them to the obedience of faith. Now, in our modern world, that concept's a little bit challenging because we live in a very pluralistic society where everyone says that you can believe what you believe and I'll believe what I believe and we should respect that. And no one should ever claim that one belief system is better than another. But St. Paul's pretty adamant here. He's saying this is actually the revelation that every culture has been waiting for. Every religion has been trying to seek God, trying to find God, and now God has come to us. Now, there's a great line in one of the documents of the Second Vatican Council where it talks about the relationship with all other religions. And it basically says that from, from the dawn of human history, it's like every culture has had their hands stretched out to heaven trying to grasp some truth trying to find out what is on the other side. And this is why we see that every religion has certain elements that are similar, because we've been grasping the same small elements of truth of God. But the difference with Christianity is that God has now come down to us and looked face to face with us. God has now revealed the fullness of that mystery in Jesus Christ. And so this is not about trying to dominate other cultures or colonization. It's actually about the fact that this is what every culture has been looking for. So this is why Paul says that this message has to be broadcast to every nation. Now, the other readings we had kind of explain this a bit deeper. Got to explain the background to this. So this first reading we had King David has just managed to take over Jerusalem. He's established this as the center of his kingdom. And he finally sits back and says, something's wrong. Because ever since we left Egypt, ever since God delivered the Israelites from slavery, the presence of God has been with us. And we've had this tent where God has come to dwell with us. And so quite literally, as they journeyed through the desert, they would move this giant tent with them. And this was the center of worship. They believed that this was the dwelling place of God. And now that they have finally entered into Jerusalem, King David is sitting in this grand palace, but the presence of God is still in this tent made out of canvas. And so he's saying, we need a temple. Okay, because if we truly believe that this is the presence of God on earth, there needs to be a fit place for worship. And so he turns to the prophet Nathan saying, look, am I meant to build this temple? And the prophet Nathan says, no. The temple will be built by your son, by Solomon. But there's almost something going on with this prophecy of saying that there is going to be this like, in a sense, the, the physical temple is just an image of the real temple that God is going to build. Right from the beginning of the Bible, God's intention was to dwell with his people. He wanted a place where he could be in relationship with us. This, this tent or, or this temple is like an, a very inadequate meeting place. And so the Jewish temple, for the, for the Jewish people, this was the center of the universe. You know, even today, you, I'm sure you've seen images of Jewish people praying at the Western Wall in Jerusalem. That's, that's the only bit left of the temple. And the reason why they venerate it so much is because, very simply, they think, well, if, if this is where God dwelt, 
then this is like the axis upon which the whole universe spins. This is the center of everything. So there is so much reverence, even just for the remnants of the building. But what we have as Christians is the fulfillment of this. You know, on, on Christmas Day, we're going to hear from the Gospel of John, that beautiful passage of, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This idea of the Word basically being the presence of God, the, the, very, the very essence of God. And that passage goes on to say, the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Now, without going into the complex scripture study of this, basically what that passage is saying is Jesus becomes the living temple. He becomes the tabernacle, the dwelling place of God on earth. He is now the meeting place between God and humanity. And, and this is why this story of Christmas is so important for every nation, for every, per, every people. Because God is no longer distant. We no longer have to perform rituals trying to send our prayers up to heaven because heaven has come down to us. And this is this, this encounter that we now have that in meeting this human being, we meet God. Now, for us, every time we pray, we encounter Christ. You know, every time we receive the Eucharist into ourselves, we are in that temple. We become that temple, the dwelling place of God. You know, this is a grace which countless generations would have died for. You know, there's, there's, a, there's this beautiful line, I think it's in the first letter of St. Peter, where Peter is reflecting on this mystery and he says, you know, you go back into the story of the Old Testament, the prophets were desperate just for the tiniest little glimpse of God. And yet we have the complete fulfillment of this. You know, people from every nation were crying out just to get the tiniest little bit of revelation. And we have the fulfillment of that revelation that we can gaze on face to face. And there's almost something where St. Peter is saying, and we take it for granted. You know, how can we be so bored with the mystery which other people would give their whole lives to encounter? So I think this is for us to really look again at what is happening here. You know, as tomorrow we celebrate the birth of Christ into the world, to really allow ourselves to look again at the, at the immense mystery of this, that this is the fulfillment of all human history, every human longing. And, and to be emboldened by that, to realize that we have the gift that every other people, every other culture, every other religion is longing for. And, and to not be afraid to share that, that, that God has come into our midst, heaven has come to earth. 